Hey there everyone, in this video we're going to be discussing a concept called vortex mathematics and how you can actually geometrically map out the shape of energy flow within our universe to tap things like clean unlimited free energy and anti-gravity. Check it out. Alright everyone, so I've had some requests lately from people asking me to get more into the esoteric philosophical sciences kind of the real science that actually describes what's going on here. And the inspiration for this particular video came about a week and a half ago on March 6th. And if you look at the date of March 6th, March 6th, 2018, right? 3, 6, 1, 8, 1, 8 is 9. So the date was 3, 6, 9. And on that date a week and a half ago, uh, because it was 3, 6, 9, I wanted to be really clever. So I posted a meme on Twitter and Facebook and whatnot of a quote from the great Nikola Tesla. And that quote is this right here. It was, if you only knew the magnificence of three, six, and nine, then you would have a key to the universe. So I want to get a little bit more into that. Unfortunately, I was a bit busy on that day a week and a half ago, but better late than never, if you're being clever, and funny enough, what I noticed right before I started doing this video is that if you take today's date, March 15th, 2018, and you actually reduce that, so you get 3, 1, 5 is 6, 1, 8 is 9. Hey man, it's still 3, 6, 9. Still can do this video. So to discuss the magic of 3, 6, and 9, this particular uh, numerology, I'm going to introduce to you a topic called vortex math. And if you saw that meme I posted with that Nikola Tesla quote, uh, I'll show it to you right here. Uh, you actually saw the diagram of vortex math, okay? But before we get into discussing that diagram a little bit more in depth, I wanna go over with you two key concepts uh, to prime your brain with so you can understand this a little bit deeper. And the first key concept is that the shape of energy flow within our universe is toroidal, it's a torus, or it's a vortexing or vorticular, if you want to call it that, right? So that's the shape of energy flow, basically everything. And I could list a thousand examples right now that you can go look at to see that. If you look at fruit, you look at the cross section of an apple or an orange, it's that toroidal motion. If you look at tornadoes, hurricanes, weather patterns on our Earth, and really weather patterns on all celestial bodies, our Earth, the Sun, it all is in a vortexing motion. If you look at how electromagnetic fields operate, they work as a torus. The electromagnetic fields of the Sun, of the Earth, of us, as above, so below, right? So that torus is an archetypal fundamental blueprint, if you will, of the geometry of our cosmos, especially of energy flow. It's, it's a beautiful pattern. I mean, you have essentially a yin and a yang involved in that shape of a torus. You have an expansion, a, a popping out of one side of the singularity. It goes up, it expands, it comes back around, goes down, then it starts compressing, and then it goes back into that singularity. So there's a natural yin-yang relationship right there. It's, it's polarity in physical form, if you will. So that's first key concept. Understand a torus, the beauty of that, shapes everything. And then sacred geometry, right here I have in brackets, specifically two-dimensional, 2D sacred geometry maps that 3D toroidal flow. So for instance, 2D sacred geometry like the uh, phi angle, the golden ratio mean, that's a two-dimensional mapping of that three-dimensional vorticular flow. If you take a phi angle and you put it into three dimensions, it wraps around itself and it goes into that zero point, that singularity, that God essence, right? Also, if you take vortex math, as you can kind of see right here, this is the top down or a cross-sectional view of a torus. So vortex math, you have the zero point, the singularity right here, essentially what is zero, and then you have numero numerologically going up to 10 around the outside of that torus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? So uh, essentially vortex math is a form of sacred geometry that is three-dimensional in nature. 
So it's a bit more complex than mapping the 2D stuff, but I'm just going to give you some basics of it to uh, ruminate on in your brain space here. So let's get into vortex math. What exactly is vortex mathematics? Well, it was an idea that was first developed by a man named Marco Roden. Marco Roden kind of was looking for some kind of theory of everything and as he was a much better mind than many mainstream ones out there, he was asking some real questions and was able to uh, get past some of that scientific mind control and get into, like I said, what's really going on. And his work was then continued by a man named Randy Powell. Uh, Randy Powell is still continuing this work and he's got some good TED Talks and videos out there. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and link in the description probably a handful of links of articles and videos and whatnot where you can get a much deeper understanding of vortex math uh, by these two gentlemen. But at least what I want to offer you in this video, I want to discuss with you a concept called doubling. And what this is going to do is kind of describe to you why 3, 6, and 9 are set apart from the other numbers around this diagram of vortex math or toroidal energy flow. So 3, 6, and 9 are actually, uh, you could say, the yin to where 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8 are the yang. Some actually say, as Nikola Tesla was alluding to, that 3, 6, and 9 are divine numbers that are mapping out the metaphysical aspects of our existence or the uh, cosmic sector, as Dewey B. Larson would say. And then 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8 are all mapping the physical nature of things or our material co uh, universe, material cosmos. So let's discuss doubling. I'm going to need to make some room on this board to ride on. Sorry, Randy, Mark. Uh, so let's discuss doubling. What exactly is it? So let's double first the physical numbers or one, two, four, five, seven, and eight. So the reason that these are all connected, you can see kind of by this wing pattern, uh, we're beginning at 1, right? So 1, if you double it, just add it to itself, 1 plus 1 equals 2. And that brings us to 2, line to 2. 2 double is 4. 2 plus 2 equals 4. Hope you can read that chicken scratch there. Now we're at 4. What is 4 double? 4 plus 4 doubled is 8. That leads us to 8. What is 8 double? 8 plus 8 equals 16, but you have to reduce it, right? That's why I was reducing the dates earlier. Ha <laughs> ha clever. So 6 reduced is 7. Leads us to 7. What is the next double? 16 plus 16, okay? What's 16 plus 16? 32. What's 32 reduced? 3 plus 2 is 5. 5. What's the next double? Well, 32 plus 32 equals 64, 6 plus 4 is 10, 1 plus 0 is 1. Wow. And if I could keep going, I won't waste your time doing that, but you could literally take this to infinity. And if you keep reducing the numbers, you know, I could do 64 plus 64, 128, 1 plus 2 plus 8, that is 11. 11 reduced is 2. Let's go to uh, 128 plus 128, 256, 2 plus 5 plus 6, that is 13. 1 plus 3 is 4, right? <laughs> Once I found this out, it was like mind-blowing to me. On one hand, it's so complex because when you get into, oh wow, actually geometrically mapping the torus shape and then uh, figuring out what to practically do with that, it's like mind-blowing. But at the same time, it's so simple. And that's the beauty about merging everything together, merging spirituality and philosophy and science, is that on one hand it can seem so complex, but on the other end it's so simple. So anyway, that's doubling the physical numbers. And you can also do halving, you can also do uh, to certain powers and whatnot. One of the articles I'm going to link below, which is discussing vortex math, I believe it's a Rents article, I'll uh, specify it. In the description but it discusses the halves and the powers and whatnot you can actually get much more deeper into doing these kinds of number games with this diagram so that was doing the doubling with the physical numbers right so now let's get into doubling the three six and nine and this is where it gets real interesting and real 
uh, philosophical, really archetypal, if you will. So let's start by doubling three. You'll kind of see how these are all different in some way, shape, or form, but let's double three. What is three double? Three plus three equals six. What six doubled? Six plus six equals 12. 12 reduces to three. What is the next double? 12 plus 12 equals 24, which reduces to six. What's the next double? 24 plus 24 equals 40A equals 12 equals three. So you can see when you double three and six, and again, I can do the same thing for six because you just end up with the same number, six and six is 12. It's this oscillation between the two. And that's the beauty of it. So you're not going like the physical numbers through the pattern. You're just going back and forth between the three and the six. And it's this dance, it's this swing, right? Like I said, it's this polarity that flips between the two of compression and expansion, compression, expansion. And now let's get into doubling nine. Okay, so I have a little bit of room down here. So let's double nine. What's nine double? Nine plus nine equals 18. 18 reduces nine. Hmm. What's 18? 18 doubled. Next one in the pattern. 18 plus 18 equals, oh, what is that? 36 reduces to nine. What's the next one in the pattern? 36 plus 36 equals, oh man, what's that? 60, 72 reduces to nine. So when you take nine and double it, the reduction of nine, nine's doubling, is always leading back onto itself. So that, that's the magic of three, six, and nine. We have three and six on equal sides of the oscillation, and nine is that uh, boundary, if you will, between the two. Nine is essentially the the divine, it's the top number in the first 10. And if you even look at the shape, the shape of a nine, it's as if it is almost like a phi angle. It's like a golden ratio, just fractally moving in to that zero point, to that singularity. And what's amazing is that, like I mentioned earlier, yin and yang, you know, the cosmic law of polarity. If I actually draw the yin and yang here, yin yang symbol, I always used to say yin yang. A lot of people say yin yang. So it's, sometimes that still rolls off the tongue just because it's habit. But if I draw it here, you know, you got the yin side, the dark, you got the yang side, and then you have them both kind of uh, always within each other. What you could say with this is that one side is three, this side is six, and then this right here between the two is the nine. So you have three and six, always jumping, oscillating between each, each other. One is the yin, one is the yang, they're going back between the two. And then nine is that divine boundary. It's right there. So you have philosophy and science both in action right here. And that's really what I wanted to show you in regards to this diagram, and you know, as actually that's pretty much as far as my understanding goes at this point in time uh, behind this. I've been aware of it for a few years now, but uh, because of that quote and my clever Twitter post and whatnot, I've been looking a bit more into it. And uh, I want to now discuss the practical carryover, right? Because I could just theoretically draw the pictures and do what I want on this whiteboard here, but there's, if there's no practical carryover, then what the heck am I doing? Uh, that's quick rant here. An issue with mainstream science these days is that it's just a bunch of, what, mathematicians just, and theoreticists kind of circle jerking themselves, always devising some new theories when there's no actual experimentation. Then when they're offered, oh, you know, why don't you actually try to make this free energy device or try to make this work in a laboratory? They just go, oh, that's conspiracy. That won't work. That won't work. That defies the laws of physics. <laughs> Not if the laws of physics you know are wrong. But anyway, back on track here. 
uh, what was I going to discuss with you? Practical carryover. So what you can actually do when you understand this kind of diagram, and I've seen this done on some YouTube videos, I'll see if I can find one and link it below, but you can actually take a torus shape and start feeding wires around it at particular angles, very specific angles, to the nature of uh, these numbers. And uh, there's some other ways you can do it as well, but you can take uh, some sort of wire wrapped around in a very specific donut shape, getting the degrees and the dimensions very right, and it will actually create a counter-rotating torus. So say, for instance, a uh, John Searle's device. You know, John Searle had two rings of magnets that counter-rotated against each other, and they made a uh, counter-rotating electromagnetic torus, and he was actually able to tap into both clean and limited energy and Electro, or gravitic, anti-gravitic propulsion with his device. Marco Roden, who I mentioned earlier, who created this vortex map, he created what was called a Roden coil. Some people term it as an ABA coil, A-B-H-A coil. And that is like I was mentioning, the wires wrapped around the donut shape, creates a counter-rotating magnetic field, taps into that zero point, taps into that singularity that radiation, all electromagnetic radiation emanates from, and all gravity, compresses back into. You see, gravity is a lot different than mainstream science actually tells us these days. It's a compression. So you can actually tap into that zero point. That's why it's called a zero point, right? Wow. You can tap into that zero point with counter-rotating electromagnetics, and you can alter gravity and create clean and limited electricity from that. So you can tap the zero point, call it the singularity zero point, God, I like to term that just to expand some people's thinking there. You can tap into that with these kinds of secrets. Okay? So that's why I'm so passionate about it. That's why I try to get as much of this science out there as I can. And that's why I try to make people realize that the mainstream physics, the mainstream sciences that we are taught in our Rockefeller funded education systems leads us astray. Even if some so-called scientist out there has 12 million Twitter followers. He is just not thinking. He's just repeating, repeating the same narratives, same narratives that were all told in the textbooks, right? That's why you can have authorities and officials even be misled themselves, and they don't even know that they're saying what's wrong, right? That's the unfortunate nature of things but hope you guys anyway enjoyed this video vortex mathematics the magic of 369 if you want for more information go check out the links below and i'll be coming back at you guys very soon with some more videos more whiteboard and more information peace